I'm Jessica Christensen Franks, Founding Director and CEO at Neighbourlytics, and this walkthrough video will take you through an overview of our data and how the platform works, as well as how to use some of the key urban life tools in our system. So Neighbourlytics was created to help make places people love and feel connected to. As founder, my background is actually in placemaking and I spent 20 years working in the industry of urban design and placemaking being confronted with this problem of our industry focusing very heavily on how to create great places, what the vision is, what the community identity will be once they open. But then to my disappointment, so often amazing projects would hit the ground, but they wouldn't feel loved and an integral part of the community quickly. And so we were trying to understand why do so many urban projects seem to miss this opportunity to create great lifestyle outcomes? Why does this happen? And when you look at the information available to decision makers, to urban designers, to place asset managers and owners, there's actually a gap in what information is accessible. It's very common to use physical environment data and demographics to understand place, and those are important things to understand. And also we have the opportunity increasingly to go to the community, talk to them, do intercept surveys, focus groups, all sorts of other things to understand what the community think and feel. But there's actually a gap in the middle here. And what is missing is data about the lifestyle values and behaviour of the people that are there. Where do they go? What do they do? And what do they inherently love and value? And that is different from what is physically available. And it's also different from what people say that they want. So to give an exp explanation of this, typically an urban project will look at, will, will think of its place like this. It has a physical environment. Of course, we'll use aerial photography and maps and really understand the physicality of that place. But how often do you actually get to see the place like this? This is the urban life map of this you know, very well-known precinct in downtown Sydney. This is Piemont. Um, and this is the, the lifestyle map. So by plotting all of the digital activity about what people are doing in that location, you can immediately start to identify where are the local amenities, what is popular and valued, and also how is it changing over time. And so this is the basis for the Neighbourlytics platform. So across the last six years, we've generated a data system that brings in four types of insights. We look at who is the community, what, who is there, who is in the catchment, how, how does the age profile and demographic of that place look? What are the habits of those people? Where do they spend time? Where do they come from and go to? Is it regular? Is it irregular? And how is this changing over time? Uh, this habits data is powered by real-time mobile phone movement data. So our system ingests mobile phones across Australia every day of the year. And so we're very easily able to give benchmarks and comparisons of you know, where levels of activity are, where visitors are coming from and going to, and this real like habitual element of lifestyle in neighbourhoods. We also bring in lifestyle values. So this is what people love and feel connected to. Why do they visit certain places? What is the unique local identity of that place as known by the people that live there? So this is different from just asking them. If you ask someone why they love their neighbourhood, they might have a top of mind thought. But, but to power this, these insights, we bring in social media chatter. So what are the things people choose to tell their friends about this place? When people go to a restaurant and want to take a photograph of what their experience was, is it the food? Is it the socialising? Is it the architecture? Is it the outdoor dining? What element of that experience was most important to them? Gives us a really interesting insight into what people value. What people choose to talk about on social media is absolutely bias, but the bias is it's what they want their friends to know about their life. And when you look at that in an anonymised manner across an entire neighbourhood, so not looking at individual people or individual personal information, but across an entire neighbourhood, you get a very fascinating insight into what are those shared values of the lifestyle and how is that changing over time. And the fourth type of information in our system is what we call the lifestyle assets. What are the amenities that actually exist in that neighbourhood that, that people are interacting with? What does the neighbourhood have to offer? And different from just a list of all the businesses in the neighbourhood, although I've saw, uh, certainly businesses are an element of our data, we're able to pick up anything in the neighbourhood that people are talking about. So you also get the train stations and sometimes the public toilets and not just the park, but if the park has a really popular fountain and rose garden and meeting spot for Pilates, those will come up in the data as well. So this is essentially the map that the community make 
of their own neighborhood. And on that map, we're able to score each individual element to be able to show you how important are those things to the community. Not only do they exist, but are people interacting with them digitally regularly? So you can get a sense of what are the most important local assets? uh, Who are the top local stakeholders? What are those key elements that drive and shape that community? So now jumping into the tools themselves, uh, the Neighbourlytics platform was created by city makers for city makers. And we know people often come to us to use and consume data, but at the end of the day, you wanna learn something. You're not here necessarily to learn 58 different intricate analytics techniques in a BI platform, although we do have advanced tools if you are interested in that sort of data analysis. And so when you think about using our system, um, there are three levels of detail when it comes to our platform. First is the discover tool, which is usually where users are starting and it's a nationwide search and compare. So you can jump into the platform, have a look across the country and immediately at a glance, see how places compare to one another. At any moment in time, you can choose to generate a summary view from that. So usually the summary views are what people are looking at when they have a site in mind, they have a project, they have a location that they're specifically interested in. And so from Discover, you can generate a summary view or also set in a custom geography and create a summary view. And this is where all of the uh, key urban life lifestyle insights are provided to you in an easy to read and share format so that it can be easily used just like a consultant report on a project. And then as I said, if you are inclined to explore the data further, you can also jump from those summary reports into our more advanced explorer tool, which allows you to do more advanced filtering and searching. So to show you what that looks like in the platform itself, when you log in, the platform will look something like this. You'll be looking across a large geography of Australia. Uh, You'll notice here on the left-hand side, there's the different groups of information that are available. So when I jump in here, I'm landing in the sociodemographic information, which is powered by the ABS. So that might be something that you're already looking at across, across your project. But one of the things that we've done a little differently here is that all of the neighborhood results a chloropleth, which means coloured especially, uh, based on the percentile of all Australian suburbs. So what we're able to see here on a personal income level is when I zoom into this area, everything in the aqua colour is in the bottom 20% of personal income of all suburbs in Australia. So here clicking on broad meadows, I can see on the pop over on the right that it's night in the ninth percentile which means Broadmeadows only has a higher personal income than nine percent of all other Australian suburbs and then when I pan down here to Pas- uh, Pasco Vale I'm going to click on that and it's in the 84th percentile. So by seeing the diversity of colour here, you can see that this precinct in the inner north of Melbourne has really uh, has a lot of diversity when it comes to income levels. So some uh, very low income suburbs right up against some much higher income suburbs. And you can see how that plays out um, across the city and flick to other things like rent, mortgages, housing, makeup, pe- proportion of people living alone. There's a lot of rich information in here. You can also compare that at a glance to one another. So I've just clicked on the table view there and it's going to pull in all the neighbourhoods adjoining the original location of Pasco Vale that I was interested in and I can compare it to Australia's national result as well as Victoria and see how they compare and then all of those adjoining suburbs. But where the data gets really interesting, and, and I may be biased, but the, the, the uh, behavioural data that sits below sociodemographic is a proprietary data set created by Neighbourlytics, where we're able to show you at a, at a month-by-month level where do visitors come from to access this location? So I'm making this recording in March and I can see the February 2024 data uh, already sitting in the platform. And so in the month of February 2024, this is where visitors to Pasco Vale came from. So we can see the chart of, of where they came and I can flick around and see, you know, what sort of relationship do these suburbs have with the CBD? How many, uh, you know, uh, people are coming north from uh, the southern areas of, of Melbourne to visit these locations? And you can you know, click around and see any anywhere across Australia that you're interested in. Uh, you can also have a look at just generally how far are visitors travelling to access these places. And again, this is <clears throat> chloropleth, where when we look at Melbourne CBD, Uh, People are typically travelling 16.11 kilometres to access Melbourne CBD. Port Melbourne also has very large travel distances, whereas um, poor old uh, little suburbs up here in the 
in the North Essendon West, people are typically only traveling 5.2 kilometers to get there. So that might tell us there's not a lot of destination appeal. People aren't traveling a huge distance to get there. And of course the airport is different again. So all of these locations gives you a sense of what the demand is for people wanting to come to this place. Uh, and then we can go back in time and see how that's changed or jump into the suburb activity. So what this is gonna show me is for any of these locations in that given month, where did people spend the most time? What were the locations spatially within that neighbourhood um, that were the most active? Uh, we can break that down. What about daytime or nighttime? What's it like on the weekend or the weekday? So you get this real um, hotspot sense of what's happening in a neighbourhood. So all of this is available across Australia, but just so I'm particularly interested in one of these locations, I'm say interested in Richmond, I'm going to ask it to generate a report for me. So what the system will do is rather than create a report for the whole suburb, and sometimes suburb shapes are fairly arbitrary and not that valuable when understanding lifestyle, uh, the system is going to identify where the busiest part of that suburb is and create the report for that location. So we're going to click here generates my report, it will do it off the most recent months of data, and then takes me over into the insights reports view. So this view now has the summary of all of the information available about this location, uh, and I can dive into it further. So it brings through the demographics again, you can see the hotspot and visitation calculations are recomputed rather than to the whole suburb level, they're done to that one kilometre radius around the busiest part of the suburb. Um, but there's also other information available in here too. So I'm going to jump ahead here to amenities mapping. Uh, so this is that points of interest information. So what this has done is pulled together in the month of February, what are all the places that people are interacting with and how important are those places to the local lives of the people that are using them. So you can clearly see the main streets running through here and get a sense of sort of where the critical mass of things that people love are. Uh, this is currently pointing out to me what are the top uh, top nine places across the neighbourhood that people love the most, but I can also look at different types. So what about community services or businesses or physical assets like parks and train stations? And so you get this sense of sort of how this neighbourhood is playing out. And this is going to change over time. At different times of the year, the scores go up and down. And so there is a real-time element to this. If I'm interested to go a bit deeper in this, I can download a CSV. So rather than just seeing the top nine here, I can generate a CSV and it's going to pull down a list of all of the businesses and, and organisations ranked in order of importance and also provide their contact details and more information about them. So if you are using this from a stakeholder management or stakeholder mapping perspective, this is a great way to get that starting list of who is in the community that might be of interest to your project, uh, either as a stakeholder or collaborator, um, and get in touch with them, learn more about them. And another tool I want to point out here is the accessibility analysis. So what this has done is a, is a walking catchment analysis of that suburb to look at, um, at sort of how far can you get in a 10 minute walk. And it's identified that this particular location has very high walkability. Uh, that's particularly because I can see that it's got a great street grid. So pedestrians can actually walk quite, a, quite well across that location. And it's also going to look at what the 10 minute driving catchment is too. So spatially where can, who can access your locate this neighbourhood within a 10 minute drive and then it's pulling in the demographics of that. So the yellow dots are the typical Australian age profile and so we can see that both the walking and driving catchment of this location really skew um, in the sort of 20 to 40 bracket and the walking catchment in particular has a really high proportion of people in the in the 30 to 40 um, age group. So uh, just some instant demographic insights um, in a much more spatial way. And I did promise as well that you can um, have a look if you're so inclined uh, at the data that sits behind that. So I'm going to go over into the Explorer tool and this is going to open up for me uh, a neighbourhood that I'm interested in and give me a whole lot more functionality. So you're familiar with this information from the maps previously, but rather than just view it here and see the top amenities as I'm hovering over, it's showing me which places were the most popular to the community in that month. I can also drop in my own walking catchment and say, I actually want to look at where you can get to within a 20 minute walk of this corner of Footscray here. Just collect and you can see where you can get to. Uh, turn off the 10 minute walk, sorry, 20 minute walk and I've got 10 and it's now filtering my results. So now it's only showing me the top places uh, that can be accessed within a 10 minute walk of that area I was interested in. And then I want to know what's open on the weekend at night. 
And so you can see these filters get built out so that you can actually go a lot deeper into the data and, and learn more about um, what's happening in that location. What are those places? What are the lists? Here are the top 10 um, things that are coming through. And then again, you can download a CSV of the results when you get there. So jumping back over to the insights report, the last piece to point out is that we also have premium data tools that can be added onto this. At the beginning of the report, I did point out um, the, the lifestyle values element, which you might've noticed was missing. It's sitting here as an add-on. So at any point in time, you can add on lifestyle values to a data report and our system will create the 30 days of data immediately before your request to show you effectively in real time, what were people talking about in that location? Are they talking about different types of activities are they talking about doing something? What types of activities were they? And how does that compare to the Australian average? Here in Footscray, uh, anyone that knows Footscray would not be surprised that creative activities are coming through really strongly as something that people love and value in that location, much stronger than the Australian average of 4%. Uh, Footscray has 20 percent. Uh, how do people like to socialize? It's much more with pets in Footscray than it is with family. Again, family average is 8 percent. In Footscray, it's only 3 percent. So you get this real-time sense of what people love in these neighborhoods, as well as some much more specific examples of what it looks like in that place. And then the final uh, piece of premium data is this activity over time. So once you request this add-on, it will unlock for you the 13 months of historical data in this location prior to the data capture. So it's showing me that in the month of this report, which was October, uh, sorry, September 2022, what was the quantity of lifestyle activity across the previous 13 months so I can compare year on year? So this happens to catch the tail end of lockdown in Melbourne, which is why it's jumping up so much across that 12 month period. But all neighbourhoods have their own rhythms across the different months and seasons of the year and this, uh, this um, unlocks this uh, insight for you. So that's the end of the, the walkthrough. Uh, just make sure that you jump in and play around. We've got on our platform um, an easy way to access uh, all of these tools with a free account. So jump on our website, hit start free, uh, and you or any of your colleagues can create a, create a free account. You'll have access to our pro tools as well for a limited time. Um, so jump in and play around and make sure that you get in touch with us with any questions. Thank you.